I have over 25 different tarantulas living in my room and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how it feels to live with that many spiders. Alright, so before we start talking about tarantulas, the first thing I want to do is talk about my situation with my 100k plaque. Uh, YouTube is kind of having a problem getting my code for me to actually redeem that. And it's been about two months since I hit 100,000, so it's definitely taking a while. I do have somebody at YouTube currently helping me through the situation. So as soon as we get everything fixed, I'm going to put in the code and then they're going to send me the silver play button and then I'm gonna make a whole video uh, basically summing up everything I did with all the animals up until the point that I hit a hundred thousand all right so let's get to the main point of this video which is gonna be me talking about my pet tarantulas I currently have over 25 tarantulas and they come in all different types of colors I got blue tarantulas orange tarantulas even pink tarantulas that tarantula is called the blue fang tarantula and I don't think they keep the pink coloration on their body when they grow up because some tarantulas go through color changes as they grow but they still look amazing throughout their whole life and if you want to see pictures of that pink tarantula you can head over to my Instagram which is at Thomas Passy and I have a bunch of pictures of all my pets over there all right, so the truth about living with pet tarantulas is this. They are pretty much pet rocks. But pet rocks might actually be more interesting than tarantulas sometimes because there are some tarantulas that will go inside of a hole and not come out. People will call them pet holes because they literally don't come out. They just sit in their hole and wait for food. This is where the three types of tarantulas really comes into play. You want to know if you're going to buy a terrestrial, arboreal, or fossorial tarantula. So first of all, you have your terrestrial tarantulas. And with terrestrial tarantulas, floor space matters more than height. And you don't really need to give them too much substrate since they won't be digging in it. Then you have arboreal tarantulas where height matters more than floor space. And uh, if you look behind me, like right here is a cage that would be good for an arboreal tarantula because it's much higher than it is wide. And actually right here, I have an arboreal tarantula living in there and uh, it's doing well. There's not too much substrate in there because it doesn't need much substrate. But the tarantula that does need a lot of substrate is the fossorial tarantulas. With fossorial tarantulas, you're gonna wanna add a lot of substrate to the enclosure. And this is because they're gonna be digging a lot. And these are the pet holes I was talking about at the beginning of the video. And I'm telling you, they will dig straight to the bottom of the enclosure and make a whole space for them. And they're never gonna come out. I have a Costa Rican zebra tarantula that has a ton of substrate in its cage. I'd say two thirds of the cage is full of substrate. And uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I actually made a video a long time ago of me setting up that exact cage. So if you guys wanna check that out, you can. It's way back in my channel though. I made it like a year or two ago. She's been doing great in there, but she never comes out of that hole. So like I said before, sometimes you might find the pet rock more interesting. I'll still give pet tarantulas more credit over pet rocks because some of these tarantulas have crazy feeding responses and you guys have seen them on my channel. And honestly, my biggest video is the tarantula feeding video. Uh, it's coming up on 4 million views. So obviously, everybody loves tarantula feedings. When I was little, I actually thought that people who kept tarantulas as pets were crazy. And that was honestly because I thought that they could kill you. And only when I was a freshman in high school, I found out that tarantulas can't kill you. And there has never been a single recorded death from a tarantula bite. So that was always really cool to me. And as soon as I found that out, uh, I started keeping a bunch of tarantulas. I know a lot of you who like tarantulas actually like scorpions too. So I do need to say that there are actually some scorpions that can kill you. And also that there's a difference between tarantulas and true spiders. And there are some true spiders that actually can kill you. The strength of a tarantula's venom does vary between species. So there are some that do have more potent venom, but none of them can kill you. As far as food goes for tarantulas, you can feed them pretty much any basic feeder insect. I'll feed mine crickets, superworms, cockroaches. You can also feed them waxworms and hornworms. And one thing to keep in mind is that you should give them appropriately sized prey items. Like you're not gonna give a little tarantula that's this big a giant superworm. Leaving big prey items with baby tarantulas or any tarantula for that matter can be very dangerous because if that tarantula were to molt, there's a lot of times that feeder insects will go in and actually eat the bug. So you're gonna have your cricket 
eating your tarantula instead of your tarantula eating that cricket. Now for those of you who don't know anything about tarantulas, they actually grow through a process called molting. When tarantulas molt, they flip over on their backs and they'll release their exoskeleton and then they'll push it off of them by shaking their legs. And uh, some people might get very scared of this if they don't know that tarantulas do this before they get one. And they might think that their tarantula is dead when actually it's just growing. After tarantulas molt, their bodies are very weak and they have to regrow that exoskeleton and uh, especially their fangs are very weak so with bigger tarantulas you might have to wait about two weeks before feeding them again two weeks might seem like a lot for some people but tarantulas can go months without eating and they'll be fine that doesn't mean you should wait months in between feeding your pet tarantula but something you guys should know is that the more you feed a tarantula the faster it grows so in this hobby people actually call baby tarantula slings and if you feed these slings a lot people call it power feeding and this is actually very effective for baby tarantulas because it gets them out of this vulnerable stage of life. Power feeding is not a good thing in general, but for me, slings are the exception because when tarantulas are slings, they're very vulnerable. If you feed them more when they're a tiny little baby, they're going to get out of that stage faster and there's a higher chance of them surviving their whole life. There's a genus of tarantulas called avicularia and these are the pink toe tarantulas and a lot of people who keep these as slings have them die on them for no reason. This is called the Sudden Avic Death Syndrome, or SADS for short. In my experience with avicularias, the they're honestly pretty hardy as adults, so getting them out of that sling stage is a must. If you want to learn more about molds, you could go watch this video I made about me going into all of my tarantulas enclosures and taking out their molds. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is urticating hairs. If you keep new world tarantulas, you're going to have to worry about urticating hairs. Tarantulas are usually pretty tame and won't bite you, but what some of them do is kick hairs. And these hairs are called urticating hairs, and when they get on your skin, they're very itchy. Sometimes I'll be cleaning a tarantula's enclosure, and by the time I'm done cleaning the enclosure, my whole hand is itchy, and I don't know why, because the tarantula wasn't even in there, and then I remember, that that tarantula actually had hairs laying all around the enclosure. So while I had my hand inside of the dirt, all of the hairs were getting stuck on my hand. This can get pretty annoying sometimes, but if you really don't want to deal with urticating hairs or you're allergic to it for some reason, uh, you can have old world tarantulas which don't have urticating hairs. New world tarantulas do have urticating hairs, old world tarantulas don't. The only problem with old world tarantulas is that they usually have stronger venom and they're also usually pretty fast so that's something you want to keep in mind so now that we've talked so much about tarantulas let's actually go see some all right so right here we have super worms and as you can see they are crawling around all over in this container there's one right there they are about two inches big and right here there's like a little piece of carrot that they munch on so i'll put that one back now if you look over here we have my Mexican red knee tarantula. Mexican red knee tarantulas are very beautiful spiders. Let's see if I can zoom in so we can get a better shot of its little tiny eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and feed it one of the super worms that we just saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one. You can kind of see it there in the background. Let's see, I'll take this one. All right, so I've got the super worm right here. And I'm gonna drop it in three, two, one okay there we go so that is a basic tarantula feeding some of them are way more crazier than that and others are more boring because you wouldn't be able to see it if it lived in a hole let's zoom in on that i'm gonna see if it wants another super worm so i'm gonna drop it in, in three two one. Oh, there we go a little slow strike and there you can see both of the super worms just wiggling around inside the mouth of the Mexican red knee tarantula. All right, so now that we've fed this tarantula, let's move on to another one. All right, so right here I have a Brazilian red and white tarantula. And as you can see, this guy is not happy right here. When tarantulas put their legs up like this, this is a threat posture. And you do not want to stick your finger right there. Uh, you will get bit. This spider is not happy. Uh, I don't think it's going to eat because it's so bothered right now, uh, but I will try anyway. Let's see. Oh, no, he's just very angry. Let's see. Let's get a close look at those fangs. 
Uh, and like I said before, a bite from one of these will not kill you, uh, but it will definitely hurt. And there the super worm is going underground. I'm gonna take it out and drop it back in because I do not want to leave the super worm in there. If I were to leave the super worm in there uh, and this tarantula molted, there is a chance that it could actually go in and kill the spider, like I said before. Uh, that probably wouldn't happen in a cage this big. Uh, what would actually end up happening is that the worm would go underground, turn into a beetle, and then actually the beetle might harm the tarantula. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this tarantula. Let's try to get another angle so you guys could see its colors. I mean, it's black and white, but it's got a nice red rump. And yeah, let's move on to another tarantula. All right, so right here we have a golden blue leg baboon. And this tarantula is actually one of my favorite tarantulas as well. The only reason I'm not following it right now is because I wanted to show you guys its molt, which is right here. Uh, because this tarantula molted, I haven't fed it in a while. But now it's strong and it's actually time to feed it. All right, so like I said before, this spider hasn't eaten in a while because it molted. This tarantula doesn't like me moving the container around too much, so that's why it's in like this little ball. Uh, it's stressed out right now, so I don't know if it's gonna eat, but I'll try to feed it anyway. Let's see. Oh yeah, look, there we go. Perfect, it ate it. So I guess he wasn't that stressed out after all. He'll calm down after I leave him alone for a few minutes. All right, so let's go check out another tarantula. If you wanted to see what a pet hole looks like, here you have it. This is my Costa Rica zebra tarantula's enclosure, and as you can see, it has a ton of substrate. So the spider actually dug, it started right here in the middle, and then it dug all down here, and it curved down to here, and then down here, it actually kept hollowing it out, and it made a whole tunnel system right here, all the way back there so it always chills out down there right now we can't actually see it because it's in the middle of its tunnel that leads to this area so it's like right here but underground and we can't even see it right here uh but sometimes like when i throw a super worm inside i'll just hear a crunch and i know that it ate so now that you guys know what a pet hole looks like we'll move on to another tarantula all right so this is the green bottle blue tarantula it kind of looks like it's going to go inside of its hide so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a super worm in three, two, one. Oh, oh, it feels it for sure. And there it goes and it gets it, perfect. These guys have amazing feeding responses. Every time I feed him, he eats. And yeah, I just can't say enough about this tarantula. They need a dry climate to live in. Uh, that means not too much humidity. They're very easy to take care of and I mean they're just great tarantulas overall. Their color is amazing. So yeah these guys are definitely one of my favorite tarantulas but now we're gonna move on to something a little bit different. Alright so right here I have an animal called the Vingaroon. Their care is very similar to tarantulas so that's why I'm including it in this video. They don't have any venom but instead they can shoot acid that's 15 times stronger than vinegar. And these guys are actually very friendly to hold. They don't really shoot the acid too much, but they can and they will. It has sprayed acid on me before and I can tell you from experience that it does burn, but if you wash it off immediately, it's not that bad. So if you guys want a pet that doesn't have venom, you should check out this animal and also tailless whip scorpions. If you made it to the end of this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment your favorite part, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.